Hi, trust that everyone is having an incredible and wonderful day. We have a superb lineup of speakers today, highly acclaimed retail leaders from five different countries and members of the MECS Plus R. The first we would like to introduce to you is Bill Kistler, founder and managing partner of Urban Ovation in UK. He's a bricks and mortar guy, an architect, started his career at IBM, witness to evolution of technologies that would dramatically change the world. He learned the importance of experience in creating great places during his time as an executive at Disney. And the changing real estate talent landscape, a senior partner in executive search firm, Corn Ferry. The second speaker is Avi Alcas, chairman of JLL with more than 25 years of industry experience. Avi is a trailblazer in the commercial real estate market. He has now taken up the role as chairman in JLL. Previously, Avi is personally responsible for introducing the mall concept to Turkey in the late 1980s and set the terms and standards <coughs> for retail leasing, shopping center management, and concept development in Turkey. Our next highly acclaimed speaker for today is Mohamed Alawi. CEO of Real Estate Development Solutions in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Savola, Alamudi, MAF, Red Sea Markets, SKAB, these are but a few of the names linked to Mohammed's career path. A leader in the retail world in Saudi Arabia, a public figure, a strategy think tank, with over 25 years of experience in creating successful developments and renovating existing retail properties. He's an active panelist, juror, and speaker at many events and conferences globally. The fourth speaker is Eric Engstrand, CEO and founder of Safe Asset Group in Sweden. He worked internationally for more than 30, 30 years in the risk and management security industry and the past 15 years in retail expansion and shopping center industry with risk insurance, security management. Their clients are on a true international basis from South Africa to Russia and all across Europe and the Nordics, which sets their requirements as a business to really understand the needs of their stakeholders and deliver a value to help them navigate in the right direction in uncertain times. And David McAdam, the CEO of the Middle East Council of Shopping Centers and Retailers. He's a senior global executive with 40 year career in real estate development, asset management, sustainable revenue generation of large scale multi-use projects and an exceptional leader who consistently transforms complex challenging into reward and challenges into rewarding opportunities. Without further ado, let's now open today's discussion and please join me in welcoming our CEO, David McAdam. Thank you. Thanks team, thanks Justin, and thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, Avi, Bill, uh, Eric, and Mohammed. it's great to have you on board with us today and I really appreciate your time to spend with us. I know that um, we have a lot to talk about today, but what I'm really interested to also use this time for is to to really open up a new idea for our organization. And what I've been hearing in the last few months is that many of our uh, former members that have been with us for a number of years have either ended up moving back to their home country or they have um, eliminated themselves from the industry, they've moved on, they've changed roles. And there's a younger cohort, there's a younger group of people now who have come into the industry, who have not yet had the, uh, the benefit of having the Middle East Council of Shopping Centers and Retailers Education Program. And over the past year, we've put together over 36 modules of education programs for a lot of these people who are coming in for many levels, but starting from ground all the way through to seasoned professionals. What we wanted to do is to try and organize a way that would enable our membership to increase, but also to provide benefits for them that would make it a truly remarkable adventure for them. So what we've done is we've started with our new program called the Global Associate Membership. And what we are doing with that is first of all, 
opening up the whole education program to everyone in the industry, everyone. And we wanted to go further than just the Middle East, North Africa. We wanted to expand also Western and Central Asia as well as, you well as Europe and other places. And we have members who are listening to us and other people who are listening to us from as far away as, uh, as the US and Canada and, and South Africa and other places. So what we're doing is we're launching this new membership program we have opportunities for people to sign up as a shopping center. So you can have as many employees as you have in the shopping center or the retail group. So if you have 20, 5, 10, 20, 100, even thousands of employees, for $1,000, you can have all of our education services for every employee at every level. And it's done digitally online. And it's available to everyone to utilize when they want, how they want. So it's not like it's a really tied to a tight timeline. You can use it at your convenience and become bona fide certified in the industry with this industry leading education program. That's just one of the benefits that we have with this new membership. We also have, the, so that's the unlimited training access. That's the first thing. The second thing is unlimited online resources. So we have access to all our events, news updates, our newsletter, search for uh, references, linking you to people who can help you. Basically, placing you at a higher level in LinkedIn and your other social media platforms. So we're able to help you to do that. We also have an unlimited individual registration. So with that, you can sign up with no additional fee to you or your team. Everyone, it's a very um, cohesive way to become a lot stronger, lot stronger in the organization, a lot stronger in the industry to help you grow. We have unlimited networking opportunities and deal-making sessions that are joined online through our team. Our team that's headquartered in Dubai have the ability to link you to all of the people in the industry, actually on a global basis, to enable you to increase your, uh, to increase your footprint in the industry while you're being educated. We also have an automatic subscription to the Middle East Council of Shopping Centers and Retailers Retail Publications. So our uh, Retail People magazine, our directory, all of these things that normally you would have uh, not the greatest access, now you have that access to with our new membership. We'll also have special member discounts, getting exclusive discounts and promotions from the strategic partners, partners and supporters of the organization. For our Retail Congress, the recon, in the past, it's been expensive. People have said, look, it's too expensive for us. When you become a new member, if someone in your organization or if you become a member of the, uh, your, your whole shopping center becomes a retailer group, becomes a member, then you get a dramatic discount to come and join us with our Retail Congress, our recon. So there are special member discounts for all kinds of different things. Uh, we're bridging the gap. We're expanding your opportunities. And I would really invite everyone to come and join us with this new opportunity, really based upon we're wanting to educate the new young people and the other people who have been in the industry for a while at an affordable rate for our industry, uh, the way we do our education program. So thank you very much. That's what I wanted to say to start off with. But I also wanted to uh, now segue and let's maybe chat with our board that's with us today and on our team and panel. And Avi Alkash is with, uh, he was the chairman of JLL in Turkey. He's retired from that role. Now he is the, uh, the chairman of JLL in Israel, which is an unusual circumstance for all of us in this region. And we really welcome Avi with your depth of knowledge and experience in the industry. And now we have this, uh, the next footprint into the uh, Israeli part of the world. Tell us a little bit now about what's going on with you and your new role and what's going on with what's going on in, in Israel. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, David. And it's such a great pleasure uh, to be with you sharing uh, the same screen. Uh, I was accustomed to share the same holes, the same uh, stages with you. And now yes. that we're on the same screen, Hopefully, until the days that we will be convening again, uh, I believe that it's uh, very good of you. Uh, thanks a lot to you that you are making good use of our technology, 
to combine us uh, from every part of the world. I mean, look at the look at the uh, attendees of today. So uh, I am uh, very glad and uh, very proud that at a very interesting period of history that I have been uh, appointed to serve this position as JLL uh, chairman in Israel, because upon my 28 years in Turkey, uh, having served, uh, having introduced JLL into Turkey, that once upon a time we were all, uh, you know, serving the same organization, one of the leading professional real estate uh, service companies, uh, which is also uh, very uh, widely active in the region as well, uh, based uh, in Dubai, based in Abu Dhabi, and also in Cairo. Uh, we are, uh, and in Riyadh as well, sorry. Uh, so uh, I am very, very happy that uh, we might be playing an important role after the Abrams Accord agreements uh, with the leading countries uh, and the others to follow in, so that uh, the collaboration uh, between uh, all the parties in the Middle East can lead towards a peaceful and harmonious and uh, much more productive uh, period for all humankind, for all the residents of the Middle East. Uh, because uh, when people ask me what I do as my profession, uh, after listening in one of the ICAC conferences in Las Vegas, uh, listening to Malcolm Gladwell, the famous uh, author, the famous journalist from Jamaica, uh, that he was addressing us uh, as the people in the placemaking business. Uh, because you, he was addressing uh, us uh, in the auditorium, in the big audience there, that you are not only serving the shopping center industry, you are not only the retailers, but you are also the people in the placemaking business. That's why ever since I uh, changed uh, my title as a shopping center professional, uh, and uh, I prefer to call myself, I am a humble servant working for people, with people, in happy placemaking for happy moments. Because uh, the more, uh, the happier we can make our visitors, our guests into our shops, into our uh, you know, shopping centers, the happier they are, the more they will spend. And the more they will spend, the more the economies will grow, the more the employment and eventually altogether the whole growth. So uh, based on this, uh, I really would like to celebrate and congratulate you on your uh, new uh, you know, initiative about this global associative programs because uh, I myself, uh, when I was uh, invited first to Dubai, to give my experiences, to give my thoughts on uh, shopping center industry, I was telling to the audience, the class, because uh, thanks to your efforts that you were always uh, making some very successful events with 60, 70 students in the same hall, uh, on top of the master classes, on, on top of the recons that you've been realizing. And I was telling them, look, if I give you my $10 in my pocket to you, and for example, Mohammed uh, Alawi was uh, also, let's say, that the attendee there, that if Mohammed would give me his $10, uh, when we were going out of the room at the end of the session, we would each go out with the $10 worth nominally the same, but each other's, but uh, not more. But uh, if in that session, I could give uh, Mohammed one idea and Mohammed would give me one idea and when there would be 60 students coming from the industry, sharing their experiences, their thoughts, so we would be all uh, much richer, uh, definitely uh, more experienced by sharing all those, uh, you know, the uh, process of combining our power. So synergistically, it would be growing. That's why I also would like to uh, commend that uh, as of the market situation, just to give you a few figures about Israel, Israel with its uh, 9 million population today, uh, it's uh, serving uh, 98 shopping centers in a total of 2.7 million uh, square meters GLA, gross leasable areas. Uh, but the average size, as you can see, uh, is much lower when I compare these figures to Turkey. Because in Turkey, uh, over the last 30 years, uh, when the first modern shopping center was opened in 1989, uh, we reached today a total of 441 shopping centers with a total of 13.4 uh, million square meter. Of course, if you would like to convert to square feet just as an easy calculation, you can multiply by 10. But uh, the thing is that we have been lucky and I, we have been very advantageous to serve some 
uh, award-winning uh, projects in Turkey. Uh, Israel has been out of the market and now with the high spending power uh, per capita uh, in Israel and the retail growing further, I am seeing a lot of opportunities that would be uh, bringing more retailers from the Gulf, uh, from the Middle East, and uh, there will be more possibilities for uh, co collective investments, uh, also utilizing some advantages coming out of the high tech and also uh, Israel's links with the United States of America. So uh, based on the collaboration to grow in the region and based on the uh, possibilities to expand, I am uh, very confident that we are looking into a brighter future uh, with more collaboration, hopefully with all the uh, disturbances, with all the turmoil to end up in due course. And if this uh, collective efforts would lead in terms of technology, uh, because I do believe that one of the most important items in our industry is uh, going to happen in the prop tech, what we call, because along with fintech, along with the other technological advancements, I do believe that we need to introduce more and more property technologies into our business. And uh, again, the educational activities that would concentrate on prop tech, that would concentrate on sharing the experiences of our, uh, for example, because we might be considered, uh, I have a good friend from Belgium, uh, Bertrand courtois Sufi, who uh, considers us that we are becoming the dinosaurs of the industry. So, but the thing is that, uh, the, uh, I would like to give you an example uh, from the geography of Israel. In Israel, there are two lakes. One is the famous lake of Tiberias, which is also considered the Sea of Galilee, where uh, Jesus uh, was uh, considered to walk on it. And then there is uh, the Jordan River that connects the Tiberias uh, Lake to the uh, to the what they call the Dead Sea, uh, which is the lowest point uh, below the sea level. Now, if you would look at the map, when you look around the uh, Lake Tiberias, the Sea of Galilee, you would see that every uh, corner, every piece around that lake is green. And uh, whereas uh, all around the Dead Sea is yellow, very desert, very, you know, uh, isolated. I hope I can, uh, I can give you this message because uh, in geography, those lakes who receive water and who send their water out who receive and give, uh, they are uh, with potable water, drinkable water, uh, and uh, they uh, make their surroundings green. Whereas if a lake just receives and does not give away its water, it evaporates there, then it becomes salty and it, it does not uh, create much use in terms of drinking water. So may God, uh, may Allah give us the strength to serve uh, the region by uh, sharing what we have acquired until now, what we have learned so that we can uh, transfer it to the new generations, because you might not just to uh, add to the uh, geographical analogy from the Israeli map, I would like to conclude with the Turkish uh, great uh, thinker and philosopher Rumi, uh, who the whirling dervishes, when they meditate, when they pray in a way, uh, they make this say, uh, move that one leg, one hand is towards the skies and the other is towards uh, the land. So what we get from the highness, from the uh, holiness, uh, we can uh, share with the ground, with all of the uh, you know, compatriots, all the people uh, who are like us, who are uh, the faces of the uh, big power of the big uh, eternity. So I thank you for giving me the chance because uh, I want to conclude with the four letters of earn. Uh, earn, uh, as you know, is to win. And I do believe that with this uh, fine effort of David, uh, my friend, and also the Middle East Council of Shopping Centers, very precious team, uh, we can help our industry to earn all together. And the earn has four letters. The first E starts with education. The second A, uh, the second letter A is advocacy. And uh, the third letter R, which is uh, standing for research, which can lead eventually to the final letter of N, networking. So if we can start with education, if we can educate each other on the job, in the profession, and then if we can advocate ourselves for all the policymakers, 
for all the market makers, for all the legislators. And then with the research that we can obtain by sharing the information, the big data of today, which would be even more precious in the coming future, then uh, with our good networking, we can earn all together. Thank you very much uh, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I hope to be uh, of any use. I am at your service, David, Middle East Council of Shopping Centers and Retailers. Whatever I can do for you, anytime, with great pleasure. Thank you, Avi. Well spoken, and thank you for your contribution. It's great, great to hear from you, and I appreciate that very much. Let's uh, move on to um, outside of London. We have Bill Kissler, and Bill has been the leader of the ICSC in London for a number of years. And uh, now he's setting up his own new business, which I think is very exciting. But uh, Bill, I'll let you join. And uh, why don't you uh, fill us in on what you're up to and what's going on in the retail world in the UK? Go ahead, Bill. Well, thank you very much, David. And it's always a, a tough act to follow when you, you're after Avi. So uh, I am... Uh, Thrilled to be on this call and thank you, David, for the opportunity to uh, see some old friends. I just quickly surfed around and saw a lot of people that I knew from my ICSC days as part of the Middle East Council and others. Um, I, I want to applaud you first and congratulate you, David, and, and the council as Avi did for your, your innovation. One of the things I had the great opportunity to do at ICSC was to see your counterparts around the region, around Europe, the other councils, the other national councils. And I have to say, along with South Africa, I know Amanda's on the call, you are one of the most innovative, one of the most agile national councils in the retail ICSC world. And, and I applaud you for that. And what you're doing now, I think, is taking it a step further. So congratulations to everyone on the call. And I think that the key word in that was innovation, that you are innovating and you are adapting to rapidly changing market environment, the market for what you provide your members, but more broadly, the market, the industry is changing. And people have said, you know, we're in a period of incredible acceleration. For all the pain that the pandemic has brought, uh, some suggest that we've, we've accelerated 10 years in 10 months. Changes, we all know that we're underway. You know, we, we've been talking about e-commerce and its impact on the retail real estate world for, for years. But if anything, the fact that many of us have been locked down for the better part of 10 months is changing consumer behaviors. But it's not just retail. It's affecting all segments of the real estate and the built environment. And one example of that is the fact that the way we work, what we're doing now. I mean, how many people on this call have been into their office? Um, certainly in Europe, most people are, are working from home. Uh, if they're going in, into the office at all, it's, it's one day a week. And someone has said recently that uh, what we're doing now on this Zoom call, uh, Zoom is to the workplace what e-commerce and Amazon were to retail. It's changing the way we behave. And we thought early on in the first few months that maybe, you know, we'd come out of this and we'd go, quote, back to normal. I think it's now clear that the behaviors that have changed are going to stick. And I don't mean to sound like a pessimist, but I think we have to be realistic what the implications of that are for everything we do, whether you're an investor, a developer, a planner, a designer, or a retailer. How will the environment we operate in change? And better understanding at the very granular level what's in the minds of consumers. Will they, in fact, we all hope they're going to return to the behaviors before and shop and eat once we're all set free. But I think people have discovered the tools that they may have not embraced before, the tools that technology has brought. And if we look forward, think about, you know, think about what we're doing again now with Zoom. How many of you had even heard of, let alone used Zoom a year ago? Uh, we, we all had video conferencing. You needed an IT department to make that work. You, you, you spent thousands and thousands of euros, pounds, durhams to in technology, now we can do it for free anywhere, anytime. What's in the pipeline? Not just prop tech, but big tech. What's happening in the laboratories in Silicon Valley around AI, XR, other technologies, which will change again, how people interact, not with each other and with place. 
So I think that the great challenge we all face as an industry, not just in retail, but across all aspects of the built environment, is how we adapt to the accelerating changes in technology and the tools that'll be available to consumers. Uh, and it's, it is emerging as a battle between convenience and experience. Again, one of the buzzwords of the last 10 years is how do we bring experience into retail environments? Ultimately, creating great places, as Abby touched on, is going to be the essence of our success going forward. And it's, it's, it's going to be a very different model. It's not going to be just about how much you sell in a store, but as we all know, retailers are now seeing their place-based uh, store as much more than just a place to sell stuff. They're seeing it as a showcase, a brand showcase, as a, as a click and collect, all of, the, again, the things we were talking about before the pandemic, but now much more, if you get in the minds of retailers, much more looking at how these changes will affect their strategy, how much space they need, what that space will look like, where it needs to be. And the last point I wanna make is I think that, um, you know, you, you, David and the Middle East Council have adapted and dropped the term shopping center from your brand. I think, you know, as much as we all uh, have spent a lot of time in, in our careers involved in the shopping center business, uh, retail more broadly speaking, and for that matter, all types of space. We talked a lot about mixed use and F&B and the other things, cinemas, uh, leisure entering shopping centers over the past few decades. I think what we're seeing now is the post mixed use world. It's more about fusion. It's more about a blending of uses, sometimes within the same space, the same four walls. And we saw that starting to happen with things like bookstores and cafes and other things coming together. I think as we go forward, you're seeing uh, residential, you're seeing workplace uses find their way into hospitality uh, business plans. So I think you're going to see a much more complicated, but in many ways more exciting, more creative, more innovative world going forward. There's gonna be a lot of pain, a lot of the legacy players who have invested decades in, in a specific sector are going to struggle to adapt but it also is gonna be a great, great opportunity for innovation. And it's gonna force us all to collaborate more with each other, but also beyond our industry, with the technology sector, with our, with our tenants, with our retailers, and to really think more broadly about the future. So end of my sermon, um, I could go on forever as David knows, but um, I look forward to the Q and A. Thanks, Bill. It's always great to get your perspectives on things and uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, let's go to Eric into the Nordic countries. And, uh, you know, the one thing that I was thrilled about when we chatted with Eric was the fact that um, Eric Engelstrand and his company Safe Asset Group are one of the companies that have been so inordinately busy this year. They've actually grown. They've uh, had a huge growth in their business. And it's an unusual circumstance for companies that are um, in the region or globally in Europe to be able to expand the way they have. So Eric, over to you. Let us know what's going on with Safe Asset Group, why you've had this great growth and tell us about what you see as a future with risk and security management work uh, with COVID and with other issues going forward. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, David. And, and uh, really, interesting to hear about what, what the, the uh, both uh, Abi here and Bill is saying because that's partly what what made us grow also and that that is adapting to to the speed and the change going on uh, in the market so basically when, when all of the uh, a year ago when this started with COVID-19 all of our business went quite quiet because we have international clients from from south africa russia uh, across europe and the nordic so no travel uh, no physical meetings and basically that is part of our um, business is meeting with retailers and shopping centers and helping them and supporting them so we really got stranded and part of that is then adopting quickly to the new market and understanding what we could do to make that change and part of that was using what, what Bill mentioned here also technology and, and all of our assessments all of our audits needed to be 
digitalized. So, so we needed to look into that and make a quick change. And we were fortunate enough together with the, the, the great team we have to, to make that change and, and also to adopt to the new requirements. And part of those new requirements was also understanding what the industry was looking for and what other shopping centers and retailers needed. And that was basically to have some sort of, of uh, form for communication to, to show that they have taken the, the reasonable steps and, and to, uh, I think you, what, what you said here a bit, uh, uh, David, also uh, get, getting the consumers to be confident to come back to, to spend time and, and uh, uh, bring families back to shopping centers. So basically that's what we did. We, we, we changed our way of working we developed a COVID-19 certification for real estate owners, mixed use, uh, because we also went from just focusing on shopping centers into more focusing on mixed assets, hospitality, offices, and so on. So part of our success was making that quick understanding of the changes to the market, adopting our way of working and utilizing technology, uh, and then listening to the industry, what was the need? And everybody was kind of looking to the left and the right. The compass is, is spinning a 360 and you need a way to, to navigate forward. And, and that was uh, basically what we did. We, we set down frameworks for how to work uh, as a property owner and, and, and a re re retailer to be able to focus uh, your, your work on, on, on a structure. So what we set up was basically starting to write industry guidelines for COVID-19 for offices, for shopping centers and how to get back to business. And, and that uh, made us uh, um, gain a lot of tractions with our clients and give them support. And um, I have to say it was, uh, we've done over 400 assets uh, across the, the, the globe and roughly in 27 countries. And all of this has been digitalized and, and, and done remotely. So, so there are opportunities to really use technology to help drive the business forward. And for us, that was really one of the, the, the key points for, for making that uh, change and leap ahead. And we have roughly done, I don't know, seven and a half million square meters of GLA certified uh, uh, um, supporting clients across Europe and, and also in, in South Africa. So it's been a, quite, um, quite an interesting journey. And again, with the help of, of uh, the team in Safe Asset Group. Uh, the other question I got asked here was a bit, you know, what's going on in the Nordic markets? And uh, we have quite um, um, well-developed support from government that is offering government support packages to real estate owners, to shopping centers and to retailers and also helping and supporting with the rent reliefs for shopping centers. So we, we do maybe have a different way of, of uh, uh, working here in the Nordics and, and it's still challenging for the retailers. Uh, we see a huge impact now on F&B and hospitality with bankruptcy uh, spreading across in the Nordics. Uh, we also see that it's been changing quite uh, quickly here because we are right in the third wave of uh, the, the coronavirus. So this is also placing new requirements on business. Uh, today in Sweden, they are placing more restrictions than a year ago. So it's actually going the wrong way and, and, and not catching up with a vaccine like you have in Israel where everybody's uh, already uh, gotten vaccination, so on. So what we see is that retailers, uh, depending on the type of retail, they are struggling, they are downsizing, they are changing from the ordinary uh, um, uh, business model, they are downsizing with staff, and this is all placing new requirements on landlords to, to be able to support. And in Finland, it's uh, as a country, it's part uh, lockdown now since uh, two weeks ago. And uh, in Finland, they responded quite quickly as an industry, industry organization, uh, good collaboration. Norway, uh, partly on lockdown, 
and starting to reopen in shopping centers. And in Norway, actually, the smallest community centers and a lot of the, the other owners in Norway as in shopping centers, they have actually delivered record sales and turnover uh, in their property and, and shopping centers industry. Uh, what we've seen in Denmark is uh, it's been on lockdown. It's starting to open up again. Uh, people are really tired. So you have had protests uh, in, in Copenhagen. You had small riots. Uh, but, but people are tired of, of, of all of this and, and, and wanting to go out and shop. So uh, what we see is that shopping centers or shopping destination places, it will always be a place where people want to go and meet, eat and, and, and shop and use that space to, to see other people. And I think that will, will something as an owner we need to focus on. And that's partly what we do in Safe Asset Group. We help to build that uh, uh, trust with the um, owners. The, the other question I got was, you know, what is needed for the future or today of shopping center? And, and we, we've touched it here today, and that's collaboration. That's partly what this global associate program that we're talking a bit here today is offering as well, Co collaboration and getting the, the mindset of, of uh, other parts of the world uh, and, and change that mindset and, and make that change. Uh, we're also seeing that uh, business requirements from, from tenants, from visitors, from owners and investors, that is also changing. So you have to redefine your, your requirements to the business. We also see that the, the risk landscape around us is, is uh, make, putting challenging on us as, as uh, owners or, or operators. Uh, and we need to adapt to that. We have to build the resilient organization and, and we have to be really listen to what's going on around us. So we have to have an agile way of working and, and really understand what does that mean for us. Uh, business, they have to move from a, a ordinary business model to a no-touch model of operation where clients coming into the shopping center, they do not want to touch anything, they do not want to try anything. So how do you adopt to this kind of no-touch model of operations in, in, a, in a shopping center? and? Uh, you know, what does this mean for visitors and, and families coming to shopping centers or to F&B units in terms of safety requirements? They will put new requirements on, on, on going to a restaurant or to a shopping center. Everybody will wash their hands and, and uh, use hand sanitizer, but they will expect a good, safe environment. So they will spend the time, they will build the loyalty, they want to come back to that uh, destination with their family. And again, we, we've touched it already, rethink, you know, the, the rising digital integration into the physical shopping center environment. What does that really mean? Do we have to change our way of thinking? Do we have to change the store layout? Do we have to change the way we, we work in a shopping center with the uh, uh, drop-off points, pick-up points? Uh, do we have to change the logistics inside a shopping center? So there's uh, a lot of things uh, going on uh, that, that, that I really think, David, uh, needs to be shared with everybody on a global basis to, to understand better. And the last point I have here is, is what, what Bill also talked about was technology. That is a super important driver forward to enhance this quick change with AI and so on. But we don't want to go into the technology trap where we think this is solving our problems because it takes three things people organization and technology and they have to be synchronized so you know how to work utilizing this technology because we've seen a lot of failure with technology where where this has been placed uh, as the solution or the, the the salvation going forward and and you have to be really balanced with that but uh, that was my uh, last point there david and and i uh, hope i'm keeping the time <laughs> also no, because this is this is fun and we can talk a lot so yeah 
Thank you, Eric. It's great to hear from you again and great to see you and thank you for your updates. And it's always interesting to get the perspective from the Nordic countries and to also to hear your success story. So Mohammed Alawi, over to you, which is the Real Estate Development Solutions CEO. And I know you've been in the industry for many, many years and been associated with many, many projects over the while. So we wanted to get from you today, Mohammed, really just what's going on in Saudi these days and, and What's, uh, what should our industry know what's going on? Over good to afternoon, you. Good afternoon, David. Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, I would like to welcome you from the Arabian land where the two holy mosques also, Mecca and Medina. And even we consider Jerusalem is, uh, is, is one of our uh, jewel mosque, or the third mosque. Uh, yes, it's in Israel right now. Hopefully one day the peace an understandable solution come to, to settlement between the, the two parties there. And I'm sure peace will come also to everywhere in the region. Uh, as, as you say, I am one of the old people in the, origin, in the business. Yes, I survived many things in this country and the regions. We survived the Arabian, uh, the Iraq-Iran war. We survived the Kuwaiti invasion from the Iraq. We survived a lot of issues. We survived even the pandemic. Uh, Corona-19, and we continue to survive, inshallah, everything happening in the future. And this is all you will have having is if we keep the optimism and also working hard in going through all these issues. Uh, Saudis and even the region, GCC, went through a lot of issues in the region, and we're still going through a lot of issues in the region also, financially, economically, the, uh, transformation of the of our system, transformation of our, our local people, and this will add something. Saudi is no different from anybody in the world. I will not repeat all that has been, been said by our guests here today and panelists about the pandemic and the all the uh, key point how to, to go through all the issues, experience, caution, save, working hand to hand, government was with the business uh, societies. What's happening in Saudi is uh, the same, but with a different view. We have a new vision for this country, what we call it 2030 visions. Uh, actually this year, it's marketing that uh, our GDP non-oil had reached 45%, and I think we are heading to 60% by 2030, non-oil uh, GDP, and this is proof that our, our vision is working for the right. Government had put in place different programs and different pillars in that thing. One of them is the tourism's uh, pillar to reach 30 million by 2030 and have two uh, main elements of that is the religious uh, tourists and non-religious tourists. There is a lot of uh, change happening in our real estate uh, business. If you recall 30 years ago, the, the models was a solo development who owned the land, have the cash, and he developed a shopping mall or a project. And I could tell you 20, 30 projects of names like that. And later on, we came like any other country in the world. We have the corporate structures, real estate, where they develop shopping malls and mixed use properties and retail properties. And the name is the Kinan Safoul, Al Hussein's Arabian Centers, Hamad, you know, right? And the list goes and goes. Uh, now, with this new visions, also there is uh, corporate uh, government funds are in, very, in investment heavily in real estate uh, projects in the country with the BIF, the Public Investment Fund, through a chain of big companies have been established. They're involving in many projects around the country. Uh, new, as, as everybody had hearing the, the the, the, the line project has been announced. Uh, the Red Sea Islands all had been on a place. The project uh, designed and uh, construction had been awarded. Uh, you, we just and they just announced in the south of the countries where the development of the south, uh, the Sauda. There is a project also happening in Al Ula under the Royal Commission of Al Ula. There is a project happening. So all those are government organizations in Mecca and Medina, where they developing infrastructure and also they developing opportunity for business to be in investment uh, for real estate and real estate uh, retail properties also. This is 
show you that the, the country is moving for different visions and uh, uh, entertainment and lifestyle is moving very well. Retailer, like anywhere in the world, had struggles a little bit up and down according to this last uh, 16 months with this, this disaster happened. But I think they, 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 they go through it uh, with the hard work in between the government, uh, different funds, uh, especially the, the, the Human Resource Fund, which funded almost 60% of the human resource uh, in, in that uh, sector. Uh, the, they are cautions, yes, but uh, they are studying all the opportunity. The opportunity now for them, it, 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 it's limited. Putting in mind, the value of land also after the, the, the taxation, the white taxation on land also had been dropped down the value of the land. This is give more opportunity for, for development to be having. Riyadh city as an example alone, there is uh, 10 year uh, plans to, to grow the, the, the city to 15 million uh, populations with almost 3 trillion real of investment, different various projects, which is going to have various big change in the, in, the, in, the, in the structure of the city and the structure of the whole economy of the country, not only the city. And uh, definitely retail and retail properties and lifestyle and entertainment and even be that will be a part of that, uh, of that uh, uh, component of the development. What I, what I, I was in a trip last uh, 10 days uh, in the countries, starting from Medina to Al-Ula to Omluj, we're visiting a lot of locations which I could see the, I could see the, 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 the fast progress happening on all those projects uh, moving very fast. And, and I think this will add also a big uh, opportunity for the investment and also the retailer. I'll give you an example. Uh, maybe retail, maybe luxury retailer that would not expand in the cities, but definitely with all this luxury uh, uh, resort. And the Red said there is opportunity for them to be there. There is a lot of opportunity to be also in the new uh, cities, which is going to be in the next five years by blinds. There is a lot of issues that have been uh, resolved in terms of uh, legalizations, structuring of the manpower and human resource in the country. A lot of funds it's supporting now the startup and the entrepreneurs to, to be in the business. And this is, I, I could see, it's one of the best things happening in the last two years that we're seeing a lot of local uh, have their own local brand. Uh, they have their, their own local brand in uh, Craftsman, food, FMBs, uh, retail, which is growing. And uh, I could see the opportunity for them and opportunity for us as a real estate also to be, to be together working together. But seeing all those nice pictures does, mean, does not mean there is a challenge. Yes, there will be a challenge. And the challenge will never finish. As I as, as I started, there is uh, the challenge of the fat, fifteen percent. There is a challenge uh, of the cost of the services has been increased. Cost of utility has increased. Uh, many things had been uh, changing uh, the, 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 in the last in the last four year or three years. But again, this is, will be all spent on the new infrastructure, uh, the pipeline of the tourism board uh, to bring tourists to this country. Uh, it's very promising. And uh, I could see that succeed is happening. And uh, I'm sure this will add also a big part. Uh, if you ask me, what is the, what is the next treasury in, in our business, in our economy, it will be tourism. Uh, not oil, no, tourism, maybe industry after that, maybe retail, but tourism, the country have a lot of resources and a lot of emphasis where they're investing a lot of uh, projects and hotels around the country, airport, uh, to, bring, to bring tourism from all over the world to that location. And I think this is going to be our, our, our uh, fantastic uh, business. Now, if you tell me what is today, what is today is the status of the retail, uh, it's, it's various. Uh, luxuries are not in the best mood those days. Uh, value retail are still doing good. Uh, with expansions on the e-commerce, uh, many many of the developer now. Today I was hearing the announcement of Arabian Center and Fawzul Hikar Retail, uh, the acquisition of 50% of uh, uh, e-commerce platform. I think it's called Foga, and uh, this is this is how we're going to see more and more. Uh, most of the developer and shareholder they starting. 
from the old fashion of doing business to the adaptations to the technology, the adaptation to omnichannel, adaptation to e-commerce in their business, in their uh, bricks and mortar, in their mixed use application. It's a part of our life today. Uh, in every in every movement we do today, and I think this is where that. But again, uh, saying that uh, uh, the change of customers, it's it's something very important. We have a, a young generation uh, society, and we could see the 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 the, 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 the change happening those days on their uh, on their needs, and also how they go for their needs and how they order it and where they order it and they do. So I think retailer, uh, they need to be. Uh, uh, adjusting and changing their uh, actions according to the new customer behavior. Behavior now is smarter, shrewder, they know what they want, they know how to get it, where to get it, on what price to get it, and they do a lot of research on their on their, on their their uh, sales. E-commerce is a part of it, and uh, I would be surprised one day that the bricks and mortar's main client, it will be the e-commerce uh, uh, units inside their shopping mall, New Shake or uh, Amazon or, or Noon or those things. And actually some of them, they are moving now on that direction. So we see that the change happening uh, from the retail property shareholders and owners and management to, the, to this digital era, moving faster than we thought it could happen. And I think they the, the, the best, the model for that is uh, the FMB and groceries and all of them are adopting to that to that system. So in in general, David, I think the, I think uh, things are moving positive. I hope that we all could uh, uh, go through this pandemic in good uh, in good shape uh, and do a lot of learning because, as Eric was saying. It's not important that we survive. The more the important is how we agile, agile, and how we are resilient to to the change. Change is happening very fast, and uh, in every sector, in every part of our business, the way we do business, the the way the, day, the way we do finance to our uh, project, the do our business model. So, according to that, we need to be moving faster than the, and the, and the, this change and to adopt to the change and do the right solutions on it. So thank you very much, David, for this opportunity. And I would like to thank you also for starting this global association program, which is going to bring a lot of international experience to this market in, uh, in, in the right times uh, where everybody needed to know. We need to extend to exchange all of us ideas and learning from all over the world. Thank you very much. Mohammed, thank you. And I wanted to thank all the uh, panelists for joining us today. It's been great. It's been enlightening. I've learned a lot. And, you know, part of what we try to do as an organization is to bring things like this forward so that we can learn together, network together, see what's going on in the industry and find out what we can do to help. So what we're endeavoring to do with our new global associate uh, membership is to really reach out to those who are in the industry and we have a very affordable it's it's a fraction of what we used to cost to become part of it so if there's anything that we can do to help you to join up so you could become educated so that we can help you to become better connected more deal making more networking we'll do that for you so uh, i i hope that that message is clear and uh, we've taken the the message from our members who have asked for this so we look forward to working with you.